to politics back home now after emerging as the winner in the Tory leadership race. Kimmy Badenoch now unveiling her new shadow cabinet. One of them is joining me now, Nigel Huston. Thank Good you morning. for joining us. You've got a new, new job. I have, yes, co-chair of the Conservative Party, along with my good friend uh, Dominic Johnson. Well, we'll get more onto the party in, in a few moments. The, the government this morning talking about smoking bans yep. and, and something that kind of started as a kernel of an idea under your party. Are you supportive of what's being proposed today? It's a slightly different bill from the one that we voted on earlier in the year because it's uh, now covering some outdoor smoking areas. So I, I'm going to see the details and we're likely to have a free vote on this in, in our party because there are valid, uh, diverse views on this because it's all about the balance between health and, of course, though, freedoms and freedom of responsibilities and the damage that could happen to some industries. But I understand that they're not going to be doing the smoking ban um, and, and outside side pubs, which caused a lot of concern to my constituents and colleagues in my party. So I'm glad that that has been removed, because it is about balance. Um, so we'll probably have people voting different ways. I'll be looking at the detail of the bill. When Rishi Sunak proposed legislation of this type and genre, Kimmy Badenoch didn't support it. She tweeted publicly a four-tweet thread saying that she didn't agree with the Prime Minister. Yeah. What's her view now? Well, uh, on the principle that she believes in individual personal responsibility and has got great concerns about government coming in and burdening business. So I think she was also very clear. She understands some of the health concerns, but she didn't think the case was made. But look, Kemi has had a leadership campaign where one of the you know, key elements of her proposition has been individual personal responsibility. So it won't surprise you that when we see policies being developed over the coming weeks, months and years, that that is a, a train of thought that will be pervasive. On this particular area, though, there is a recognition that there is a, a really fine balance here and you can look at the data and information and two people can come to perfectly valid different conclusions. It's similar to some of the other debates we're having. Individual personal responsibility. So, as you, as you mentioned, Conservative Party members will, and MPs will be able to vote freely on this? I understand that we will have a free vote on this because we did previously um, under Rishi's leadership. Tuition fees made lots yep. of headlines yesterday. What's your reaction to what the government proposed? Well, I'm concerned about it because it's yet another example of what we're seeing as a pattern here of Labour in opposition saying one thing and then in government doing another, usually at the cost of somebody, in this case, students. I mean, Keir Starmer ran his whole leadership campaign saying that he either wanted to get rid of or significantly reduce uh, um, student fees. Uh, Bridget Phillipson, the Education Secretary, promised, I think, just a couple of years ago uh, that they would not, Labour would not, increase tuition fees. And lo and behold, they come into government and do the absolute opposite. But your and party joined into a coalition with a party, the Lib Dems, who said they wouldn't increase tuition fees and then did the opposite. Well, that was for the Lib Dems to explain, because... But it, was a, it was a coalition well, think, government. Yeah but, I think, well, yeah, but this is the thing. You know, when you're in government, you own your policy decisions. When we were in government, we owned and had to explain their policy decisions. This Labour government does, and I say this is a recurring pattern that the British public are rightly concerned about. Saying one thing, doing another. We saw that all over again last week with the budget. You know, we're not going to increase taxes. All of our policies are fully funded. We're not going to increase uh, debt. They did the absolute opposite. And they've done again. You know, one week later, they're doing the exact same thing, but this time on student fees. So I'm not surprised people are angry. We know we need to balance the budget. And we know that there are constraints on the public finances. That's why you have to make decisions. But did they have to make this one? On, given the previous promises they had made. You know, they're not being straight with the British public. But they would say, potentially, given the previous government making it harder for foreign students to come and live and work in the United Kingdom, they are a big revenue driver for universities, that they maybe have no choice because your party made it harder for people to come across. Uh, look, uh, we were... Our, our policy on education and was also looking at other opportunities, so that's why we had such a focus, for example, um, on apprenticeships. We were also looking... But people coming abroad yeah. are not coming to do an apprenticeship in the UK. No, we've, we've still got lots of uh, overseas students coming to the UK and they contribute significantly to the UK economy. But when it comes to British students paying fees here, I'm not surprised they're angry. But we were also encouraging people to look at the return on investment. If you go to university, is the course one that will lead to enhanced revenue over your lifetime. And there were many courses out there as well that the reality is that they weren't delivering a good ROI for students. So we had a focus on that. But they say it wasn't all about everybody should go to university. We recognise it's not appropriate for everybody. And you can generate skills and have great life experiences doing other things as well. So the obsession with everybody's got to go to university is something that we had concerns about. And certainly when it comes at such significant costs, and we've seen this week Labour are whacking up that cost. A cost that tripled under the previous government, the Conservative government back in 2012. This is their policy, they've got to explain it now. It's a yeah. policy that's tr 
gone beyond governments, though, it's fair to say. Let's just talk about the Shadow Cabinet, because you're going to yeah. unveil it later today. You are in a bit of a bind, though, is it not fair to say? Because there's 124 positions in the government and there's 121 Conservatives. How are you going to be able to cover and shadow the work of government? Well, we will uh, cover it because we've got immense talent and, and breadth you don't of talent have the in the Conservative Party. Well, many... Uh, it's not uncommon. For example, when I was in government, uh, a couple of times I was both a whip and a minister, and that happens as well. So, uh, actually, you don't need quite the number that you might imagine um, in terms of coverage. And uh, we've got some very competent people who can often do two jobs. But the key thing is we've also got some new talent as well uh, in the party. We've got 28 new MPs, uh, some of whom you've seen deliver the most amazing ma uh, maiden speeches and bring in great experience. And I suspect that some of those will be in the uh, government as well in various positions. As, by the way, um, this government's brought some new people straight into front bench positions as well. Again, that's not uncommon. We, uh, Kemi was very clear. She wanted to be generous and offer her opponents who were willing to serve roles, and I think we'll see some of that later. I don't know, by the way. I'll find out about the same time as you will. We know some of them, yeah. though. Robert Jemrick, for example. Well, we'd, we'd, uh, I don't know. Uh, I've it's, seen, it's I've seen there's, a, I've seen there's the a lot of media speculation, and um, so we'll find out shortly. Um, but, but you've seen already with the appointments that Kemi uh, has, you know, for example, the appointments in education, she has uh, picked people with Laura uh, from the left and Neil O'Brien from the right, um, because she wants to make sure that we unite. That was one of the themes. Let's pick up on that unite, and let's work mm -hmm. on the working hypothesis that Robert Jemrick is the new Justice Secretary. Mm -hmm. He spoke stridently and very firmly about the ECHR, wanting to get rid of it, wanting the UK to leave it. Kemi Bavenock said that was a distraction. How can she bring about unity if there's two such different opinions, and he is potentially holding the brief of Justice Secretary. Well, look, I, again, I'm not going to speculate on individual uh, appointments, because I generally don't know, but look, the, the broader point you're making is a fair one. And as I said, what Kemi has said throughout the whole uh, election, leadership election campaign, was she wants to unite the party, and the way that we'll do that is by focusing policy development on underlying core principles and values, and that does unite us as Conservatives. Um, and so focusing on those principles first and policies later was the right one. And, of course, on ECHR, she said, after looking at the principles, looking at the options, leaving the ECHR may be an option, but what she didn't want to do was jump to that as a concluding outcome. And I think that was the right approach and probably one of the reasons why she won the election, because that sensible approach of principles first, looking about what does it mean to be a Conservative, what values do we share, is a sensible one. Are you going to tell me that you can't say whether or not Priti Patel is going to be the Shadow Foreign Secretary? I, I, I can tell you because I generally don't know uh, at the moment. But I say it won't surprise me uh, that she has an appointment because Kemi said that she would offer roles to her opponents. And, uh, and, and she's, a, she's a talented person. And will you be watching the US election this evening? I certainly will, yes. I'll pay close attention. I lived and worked in the States for many years. Um, and, and it will have an impact on the UK, there's no doubt. Nigel, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.